Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with beef satay. That's right, I'm doing my take on this fabulous Thai appetizer. And while it normally is served in a very small portion to start a meal in a Thai restaurant, we're gonna go ahead and do ours entree sized. And why? Because it's bigger. And if I've learned anything from watching commercials, more of something is always better. All right, so let me show you how to do this incredibly delicious beef dish. And it starts with a simple but incredibly flavorful marinade. All right, so in a mixing bowl, we're gonna start with some freshly grated ginger. And for this task, I really like to use the microplane. So pretty much the same as if you just finely, finely minced it, except that microplane will grab a lot of the tougher fibers. So I really like this method. To that, I'm gonna add some crushed garlic, some finely minced onion. We're gonna sweeten it up with some brown sugar. Now, traditionally, this is done with palm sugar. So you can use that if you can find it, but brown sugar works beautifully. We're also gonna need some fish sauce. That, of course, is gonna bring the salt and the funk. All right, we're also gonna add some vegetable oil and a good drizzle of soy sauce. And then we're gonna spice this up. We're gonna add a whole bunch of ground coriander. That would be one of the signature flavors in this. We also want some ground cumin. All right, let's go ahead and throw in some turmeric and of course some cayenne. And we'll take a whisk and we'll mix that up. And at this point, your marinade is basically done. Although if you can get it, I would add one more thing, this. That is a stalk of lemongrass. And to use that, we're gonna cut off the bottom inch. And we'll also make a cut and we'll peel off one or two of those very tough and woody outer leaves. And then very important, we're gonna take the back of our knife, or in my case, cleaver, and we're gonna smash that stalk up and down. And that's gonna help break down those tough fibers. It's gonna make it much easier to mince, but more importantly, it's gonna release all those amazing flavors. And then just go ahead and shave it off, cut it as thin as you can, and then give it the old choppa choppa till it's very, very fine. So I'm gonna add some of that. If you can find it, I suggest you do. If not, some people add a little bit of lime zest or even lime juice, but we'll talk more about that on the blog. So we're gonna stir that in and that marinade is done. And yes, you can make that part ahead of time. So we're gonna set that aside while we prep our beef. And for this, my favorite cut to use would be top sirloin. All right, it's generally very lean. You might have to trim a little bit of fat around the outside, around the edge like that. And if there's any parts of the meat that are separated by a membrane, you wanna divide that and clean that up. All right, you definitely wanna get rid of any silver skin. And then I'm just gonna take one of those steaks, cut it into like three or four rectangles, and then just cut thin strips. And because we're making this kind of entree sized, I'm gonna cut mine fairly large. All right, this is about an eighth of an inch thick. And you know the drill, we've gone over this before. The length and width aren't the most important thing, it's that you pick a size and shape and stick with it so that everything cooks evenly on the skewer. And when all your meat's sliced, we're gonna go ahead and dump it into the marinade, give it a very thorough mixing. And I'm not talking like 20 seconds, you just phone it in and stir it a few times. I'm talking like a minute of thorough, thorough manipulation. Because you better believe a few of those beef pieces will stick to each other and you will get no marinade in between them. All right, so really mix it well. At that point, we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let this marinade for two hours. Personally, I think overnight is too long, although they say you can. But for me, the optimum range would be between two and four hours. Like I said, I did two here and it was perfect. So a couple hours later, we're gonna pull that out and we're gonna go ahead and weave that onto some metal skewers. By the way, I knew someone one time that could skewer stuff with one hand, just in the bowl, clearly not something I can do. So we're gonna go ahead and use both hands and take that meat and just thread it onto the skewers. All right, this recipe will make four big ones. You're gonna put roughly the same amount on each one. You're gonna make sure the meat's touching but not totally pressed together too much. All right, we want the heat to be able to get into those nooks and crannies, so don't pack it super tight. And once all that meat is on the skewers, we are ready to head to the grill. And as I usually do, I have a very hot, mature charcoal fire. I've lightly oiled those grates, but there is a little bit of oil in the marinade, so these should be fine as long as you don't move them too quick. So right there, that had only been about a minute and I could tell they were still sticking. But after about two and a half minutes, there was enough caramelization on that surface and I was able to give those a little wiggle and a turn. And be careful, don't let a piece escape off the top, otherwise you'd have to eat it. All right, so get that one back in position. Kids, keep your hands off the grill. All right, so basically it's about two minutes on that first side. I'll flip those over, give them another couple minutes on that side, and then I'll simply keep rotating them around, turning them over to a side that doesn't look as dark until they're done. So my total cooking time was only about six minutes. And of course you can peek in between the pieces of meat to see how you're doing. If it looks too rare next to this gear, give them a little more time. I can only give you a ballpark for these things. Ultimately, you're gonna be the one that has to decide when they're done, because of course you are the Troy McClure of your skewer. You may remember that reference from such videos as, well, actually I don't remember, but I'm sure I've used that joke before. But anyway, at this point I figured mine were perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off. 
And we're gonna let them rest for just a minute while we find our peanut sauce. Although you know what, I could not wait. This looked so amazing and the smell was just intoxicating. So I pulled off a piece and ate it and it was incredible. This is so delicious, you have to make this. But anyway, then I came to my senses, I stopped eating, I plated it up properly. You'll notice I spread that skewer back out so no one could tell I stole one. I'm nothing if not tricky. All right, and then I ate some more, but properly. Dipped in a little bit of peanut sauce. And yes, I will show you how to make that. That will be the next video. I have a new and approved peanut dipping sauce recipe that I just totally love, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, there we go. My take on the world famous beef satay, one of the world's great appetizers. And as the old joke goes, what's better than a little satay? A lot of satay. It's just a truly amazing combination of flavors and one I think you should try very soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.